we were speaking earlier that um, uh, we were talking about the black household, right? Mm-hmm. And the, the, the information circulating that majority of black households are single parent households. But mm-hmm. then you brought up a great point saying divorce rate is so high in the white community. So they have a high rate of single parent households also. Mm-hmm. And I was saying that despite that though, the uh, ability to earn, that's like the, that's the problem between the white household and the black household. Well, they'll make it the women. ability to earn. Access. The opportunity, opportunity to, earn to earn and access to earning. Because if it came to access, ability, we'd ability. be ahead of Sorry. the food chain. Access to earning. Right. right. An income that allows you to run a household providing the food, clothing, shelter, safety, security that the household needs. That's where the black community is being hurt. <coughs> and a big part of what's hurting the black community in that regards is the heavy immigrant population that's rolling into the country now, which is beyond any pale of immigration. No one let millions of people across their border every month. Nowhere in the world, ever in the history of the world. So what is that about? After the 60s, when they couldn't defeat us politically, we won the voting rights. We were voting. They can't say black people don't vote, because if we didn't vote, you wouldn't get Obama twice. If we didn't vote, you wouldn't have Biden in the office, all right? If we didn't vote, you wouldn't have had um, Clinton in the office twice. That's black votes that made all of that happen. So the, the myth of the black person not voting, even after getting the voting franchise, is just a myth. They may want us to vote more, a larger percentage to vote, but a larger percentage, how much of the Latino community vote? But you ever hear anybody says Latinos don't vote? How many of the Asian community vote? But do you ever hear anybody say Asians don't vote? How much of the, 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 the German community don't vote? But you never hear nobody say the German community don't vote. Why is this constant attack on the black community? because you want to commit crimes against them and have them responsible for the crimes you commit against them. And so after the 60s, when you couldn't defeat us with the vote, we defeated you. You couldn't defeat us with a lot of the legalisms that came in the labor laws that said you had to give us employment. So the way you defeated us said, we're gonna bring another employable population in the country that not gonna ask for those labor laws to be enforced and put your butt on the sideline, put you on the unemployment line, and then we're not gonna give you unemployment. That's what happened in America, big time across America. It hit me one day and I'm driving Highway 13, going to Virginia to see my kids. I had three of them in Hampton at the time. And Carol and I, and we just working class people who just got a first, both of us in our family, a first generation to go to college. But all of our children, have at least a master's degree and some PhDs and two are working on PhDs because we understood what that means. And we're not the only family that did that. Um, from the Caribbean and the U.S., almost all of us in my generation were first generation going to college and our kids went to college, right? You think the powers that be didn't see that and realize that one generation down the road, that's the ruling class. Now, how do we stop that up, up with growth? you got to cut off the ability to get the income to send a child to school, all right, so that they can go to college and so they can move to the next level and put their children in college. But one of the ways they did this was to flood the country with, mainly the brothers and sisters came from Central South America. Um, We call everybody that speaks Spanish Latino, but the Spanish-speaking community is not homogenous. Those who are Puerto Ricans are not a part of that community that's coming at Honduras and, and Nicaragua and those places. And all of these countries are countries that America control economically, politically, and has overthrown every government down there. And almost every government except the one in, um, I think, um, in Nicaragua um, is under American control to this day. Much of South America is under American control. They couldn't get Venezuela, you know. They have, to some degree, this government in Brazil, even though with this new guy coming back in the government, he's still working as a part of that um, group that's controlling Haiti. You know, he still goes along with that program. So they, they, they've brought in an alternative. See, you got to go back to the, the Civil Rights Act of 65, all right, because it's dealing with a lot of the labor and employment issues in America for black people. 
is removing all of the discrimination that's blocking us from getting work and getting jobs in the different institutions. And so they said, okay, we'll bring in a population that's not going to ask for union, they're not going to ask for insurance, because they're in jeopardy. If they open their mouth, I take the green card away. If they open their mouth, I will deport them. And they're just poor people just like us, who are trying to make a living to feed their family, close their family, and have a better life for their family. But they got something over their head they can't put over the head of the black American. But what they can do to you is make sure you're not in the marketplace, that the marketplace is still being filled with labor, but it won't be you. <coughs> and it worked, because it happened so subtly. And I remember one day I was going down Highway 13 to visit my children at Hampton for the weekend, me and my wife. And I saw one of the big farm trucks. And all of a sudden, I saw no blacks. So going down, I didn't say nothing about it. But when we coming back up 17, all the farms along the eastern seaboard, I see the same thing. I see all the men on the back of the farm trucks, but I don't see no black folks. And that happened within a two-year period, where those trucks were full of black laborers. And then two years later, not a single black laborer could be seen in those fields. Because have you ever drive, driven 13 down south? It's just farms after farms after farms for hundreds of miles, right? And the black laborer who was gone. And then you saw the same thing in the city. When I moved up to New Rochelle out of Harlem, New York, all of the yards were being done by black, um, what do you call it when you, you do the lawn? and Landscaper. Huh? Landscaper. Landscapers and, and garden. There's not a single black company in New Rochelle any longer. And all of the companies you see today are made up as younger brothers and sisters, or even as the elder brothers and sisters, who are part of the new immigrant group that have come from Central South America. Now, I'm not trying to put them down. I'm trying to let's be clear that I understand what, the, what this, this immigration thing about, because you change the category that anybody can cross your border. I'm not talking about the people who come through the border, present their paper. You got corridors for that. That's not how most people are coming into America. Most people are coming to America by skirting that process. You used to call them illegal immigrants. Now you refer to them as asylum seekers. What asylum? What is going on in their country that they're seeking asylum from that the Haitians isn't seeking asylum from? But you turn the Haitian boat back and send them to drown at sea. You beat them with whips and riding on horses, and you put them on a plane and fly them back to Haiti. They have a worse asylum situation than any place in Central South America. So this isn't about asylum seekers. This is about moving the black, a black working class from the working underclass out of the marketplace. Because anytime you get trouble, anytime you get demonstrations, that's the class that's doing it. It's not the middle class. It's not the upper class. It's the working class and the underclass, the lumpen proletariats. They're clear on that in America. We showed them that in the 60s. And they said, this will never happen again. We will destroy the lumpen proletariat class and put you under our feet and we'll use drugs to keep you down and the police to enforce that. And we'll replace you in the marketplace. You'll no longer be the restaurant workers. You'll no longer be the cooks in the restaurant. You'll no longer be the doorman downtown Manhattan. Yes, it all happened so suddenly, subtly, but look and see who was there. When I was there, when my mom worked down on 77th Street, I saw who the workers were. Now they're sitting on corners, can't get jobs. Okay? So their job is to sell the drugs that the intelligence apparatus allowed to come in this country through Haiti and other places, which is a big conduit for that, for the cartels, <laughs> drugs. Drugs is a multi-billion dollar business. Okay? It is, we prove Oliver North and, and, and General Secord and the flying the drugs into Arkansas um, National Guard base while Clinton was the governor to buy guns from uh, Iran to give to the Contras to destroy the Nicaraguan Revolution. If that didn't tell us our government role in it, that role never ended. And it's all tied into the inner city black community in terms of how you destroy a community, especially the males in a community. But you still need workers, so what do you do when you destroy your working population 
at the bottom level. You import another working population to do that. And of course that population is a deprived people, um, hungry people, starving people, trying to become somebody people. So you can't blame the victim. But at some point the victim got to realize, I can't sit by and continue to collaborate voluntarily or involuntarily with my enemy without my responding to your doing it because you have as much common sense as I do. You see what's going on.